Okay, we just talked about, at the end of the first hour, this potential uh, audio clips of Rush Probst, who is a high school football coach in Valdosta, Georgia now, has had a star-crossed career as a coach, which began back when he was the uh, head coach in two-a-days in Hoover, Alabama, which is a suburb of Birmingham. Alabama cares about football more than almost any state in the country, particularly high school football, college football, you name it. Uh, And he coached at Hoover for nine years. He won five state championships there. He then moved to Colquitt County High School in Georgia, and uh, now he's the current head coach at Valdosta High School. Uh, He's had all sorts of different issues in his own personal background, uh, including having a second family, basically, which obviously is uh, is tough to uh, to pull off for most people. And he now is in Georgia, and as I said earlier, Valdosta, Georgia, Southern Georgia, incredibly high level of overall competition at the high school level. And he has been recorded, and the recording which took place uh, was by another individual talking about Alabama and Georgia both playing, uh, both paying top uh, athletes in order for them to go to those schools to play uh, college football. And this in and of itself, not necessarily a surprise, but the specificity of the allegations that are out there are, I think, worthy of uh, worthy of considering. Now, again, this is not a guy who has been entirely honest throughout his entire coaching career. And again, he had another family, according to multiple reports out there. But these allegations about Kirby Smart and Nick Saban are pretty interesting. And again, this was recorded, and I'm trying to get the exact details uh, so I don't uh, don't mess them up for you. He was recorded uh, in a discussion with a Valdosta Touchdown Club executive director, uh, Michael Nelson, is the report of what you are hearing on this audio. Uh, That is according to uh, to multiple sources on the internet that have written about uh, about this tape. So let's go ahead and play this tape, and then when we come back, We will discuss this a bit, may also talk about it a little bit in the third hour of the program as well, Uh, but this story, again, has gone viral, lots of discussion surrounding it. I don't think people care as much uh, now as they used to about the allegation of players being paid and what is and what is not an improper benefit, but still, the details that are alleged here are pretty specific in nature. And I'm sure that Georgia and Alabama will deny that these are true. But here is uh, what I said again. Rush Probst recorded talking about Alabama and about Georgia paying players. Do you know what Kirby's doing at Georgia right now? you know why he's taking that program the way he is? I think because he's a good recruiter. He is. But why do you think he's getting these kids and keeping the kids in and all that stuff? Taking care of them. So he's got a guy named Hugh Nall, who lives in Albany. Hugh is the Hugh is the guy that sort of handles things. Okay, he's the handler. Okay, so Kirby's come down and met with the richest of the rich of South and West Georgia, not Southeast, not Macon, Southwest where he's from. Mm-hmm. He got the richest guy in Bainbridge. He got the Two richest guys in Caldwell. He's got a rich guy over here in Valdosta. Anybody's in Georgia. I wonder who he's multi- got in Valdosta. Multi-millionaires. Now listen, do you know how much money they spend on a player when they get them? Some of them are nine to a hundred thousand dollars per sign. Some of them are nine to what? Nine to a hundred and fifty thousand to sign. Like mm-hmm. Chubbs. When Chubbs came back and Chubbs didn't go to the NFL draft, Mark Motley. It was three sixty thousand dollar donations given to Chubbs to stay in school. That's hundred eighty thousand dollars. Nick Saban. I was going to say I mean, that was going to be my next guess. See, Nick's got a name because Nick's got one guy he answers to: Paul Bear Bryant Jr. 
All Junior is his go-to guy. Multi, multi. He's a second-reach guy in Alabama. Well, the third-reach guy in Alabama is the guy from the Mobile. And so, Amos Cooper. So, Amos handles all the Mobile money. Coach Bryant had that set up in the 60s, 70s. So, Mobile, where all the dirty money comes, or over around Aliceville up to the west side of the state, up around Florence, down in that in that Joe Wheeler State Park money. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling you, that's how Alabama handles every bit of their down recruits. Okay, you just heard both of those audio clips. And I got to be honest with you, nothing that was said there really surprised me to a large extent because I kind of anticipate that this is going on. And I do think one of the discussion points that never gets brought up, we have kind of this perpetual argument about whether or not players should get paid. And one of the arguments that never gets brought up is, hey, players are already getting paid. Many of them are making tens of thousands, even $100,000 or more, if you pay attention to many of these different stories that are out there. And if players are truly getting paid in order to take these opportunities that are out there, I think it's hard to argue, hey, they need to be making more money on top of it. Now, personally, I would rather just know than constantly be in this universe where we say, oh, that coach is a guy who wears a white hat and that coach is a guy who wears a black hat, right? Which is what is argued now. Some coaches do it right. They're the white hat guys. Other coaches do it wrong. They're the black hat guys. But what if everybody is playing basically by the same standard of rules and this idea that some coaches are above paying players and or having boosters pay players and other coaches are not, what if this is just the cost of doing business? Wouldn't you rather know the truth than kind of buy into, oh, this guy's a really good recruiter. What does really good recruiter mean? It means that he has good relationships and can manage to produce money when he needs to? I I would rather believe and know the truth than occasionally get tapes like these that emerge and suggest that this is just the cost of doing business and playing uh, successful football at a really high level. Again, don't claim to know the truth or veracity of any of these allegations, and I'm sure that they will be denied from the get-go, but it sounds so much like what went on when the FBI investigated big-time recruiting in college football that I find it hard to believe that all of this is completely made up and that there's no substance to it whatsoever. 